It is that time of the program again. We call it rapid fire. We're going to run you through some of the most interesting and important or at least interesting stories of the day. And here now to walk you through them and bring the heat, Seema Modi, Dom Chu and Leslie Picker, three enter, only one can exit. First up, Netflix shares. They are sinking today. You may have heard this. Followed a big miss for global paid subscriber growth in the second quarter. But Netflix not blaming its competition for fewer people signing up. Instead, CEO Reed Hastings says its content slate simply was not strong enough. Apparently, Simo Modi, content is still king, but do you buy it? Was it the lack of good shows or was it competition? I think it's competition, especially when you look overseas, Brian. There are a growing number of local competitors, streaming players that are offering localized content in countries like Indonesia, Thailand, and India at 50% of the discount to Netflix. So why would you buy Netflix if you're sitting in India and you want access to Game of Thrones or other okay. great and shows? I, and I, I brought this to you. You know why? Because every time I look at your Instagram feed, you're in another country. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, you're you're like, I'm in London, I'm in India, and I'm over here. She's our travel reporter, for goodness yeah. sake. I mean, we have a travel reporter? Yeah. Yeah. It's Seema uh, Modi. It's, it's a joke. Oh, my gosh. We've both been up too long. So what are people talking about there? Are they talking about Netflix? Is it on the tongue like it is here? It's among those who are working professionals and who are perhaps a little bit more worldly. Let's say they went to college here, then went back to India. Those individuals likely do have a Netflix subscription, but others um, typically don't because it's too expensive. It's a similar story for Apple, where yeah. if they want to own an iPhone, it's the top, you know, 5% of the customers. Was it content, Dom? I think it, you know. The crown, get a little rusty, boring as the new black. Here's what I would say. I would say <laughs> that I, I don't consume as much of their original content as many others do. What I would say is that when I first signed on to Netflix, it was because of the content library that they had. We all know that that content library is somewhat getting smaller, especially on the television Friends front gone. there. Right, the office. The one in on which Netflix like fell 10%. So, so here's what I would say. I would say that, and I've said it on this show before, I, I like many other Americans, I'm sure, are dealing with a resource allocation issue at this point. I have Does a certain mean? amount of money that I want to spend on online streaming content. And I'm going to make a choice at some point. I'm going to tilt towards, hey, I can spend like 20, 25, 30, 40 bucks a month on this max. Is Netflix going to be one of those options? I will tell you right now that for sure, the Disney streaming service will be, and not because I'm drinking the 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 the, the you know Kool Aid, so to speak, with with Disney. You have a baby. Because I have a baby who yeah. loves Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, and those particular types of shows are going to resonate more in my household. Will you kill I will pay for that, but I don't know whether or not I will get rid of that Netflix because the content may not just not be as relevant to me. So maybe the price hikes that everyone was so concerned about, whether their customer base is sticky enough to stay with them in the face of the competition, in the face of people like Dom who are trying to make choices about how much they want to spend on their streaming services, maybe price hikes are an issue for them. And I do think it's interesting that over the last couple of months, we've seen these numbers trickle out for shows like Stranger Things, how many people are watching that when they see us murder always be my maybe murder okay. mystery and we're seeing their numbers that's a different rapid fire because if i was a guest i might have something to say like, oh 700 million people right. watch the new adam sandler movie really i wonder yeah. if according to who i wonder if that Netflix. was part of this strategy to make people say oh people are watching these things these are yep. these are hits but then when the earnings actually come okay. out we see a different story all right here we go next up online pet retailer chewy.com set to deliver its first earnings report since its public debut after the bell today stock has been on a tear since its ipo up more than 40 percent company reporting 67 percent sales growth for the fiscal year all right, Seema, can we expect it to keep up its momentum? That is a key question, and it really comes down to Amazon. That is the key competitor to Chewy's business. In fact, in response to Prime Day, you saw Chewy uh, implement a number of discounts to get their customer or stop their customer from buying the similar products on Amazon's website. So that will be the key. How is this discounting strategy impacting its bottom line, not just yep. for the first quarter numbers, which, by the way, we, got a no we already got a look at its preliminary numbers during the IPO Roadshow. It's all about second quarter and 20. 2020 guidance. You know, I should have it, asked the man who's the only one with the dog as his two avatar of them. Are two of them? on his two social of them. media feed. Here's what I would say. I would say that, yes, Amazon is going to be the de facto competitor of record for just about everybody about who sells stuff online. Shop? So that's what my point is. My point is I don't ever view, in, in, if there was one part of my life that is not Amazon right now. It is pet stuff. Why? Why? Because I go to either a Chewy or I don't use Chewy. I use a competitor called PetFlow. But there are, Pet there's Flow. also PetSmart, right, which owns part of that Chewy. Chewy right, yeah. exactly right. So there are all of these pet-specific retailers that I will go to first before Amazon, especially when it comes to food. And that's the stuff, by the way, that people spend more on. Food and vet bills, 
than they do General on, say, Mills, toys Leslie, or else. if I remember right, General Mills paid, I think, $7 billion for, Blue for dog food company Blue yeah. Buffalo? Yeah, Blue Buffalo. I mean, so, pets are a big business. Are you I a mean, pet owner? I am not a pet owner. Not even I like live a. live in like a tiny little box and <laughs> flat iron. Same, same story. So have you a know, tiny what little pet. Have like a little, me. I don't yeah. know. A little cat. goldfish. I had a cat. goldfish growing up. I don't know, a lemur? Mine died. I don't know. I, I died. Mine, died. mine died. I named them Trip L It, like triplets, because <laughs> there were three of them. Oh, gotcha. So clever as a little kid. Uh, anyway, I think what has people really excited is the average customer spend for an active customer on Chewy's website is $334 a year. It's expensive. It's expensive, but people are willing to spend yeah. that money. The question, though, that investors have surrounding these earnings is how much of the stock price appreciation is due to momentum and excitement okay. around this space I have versus an 80, actual I have an 85-pound dog, yep. so he eats, and we got another dog coming in November. Here's the thing. Oh, mazel. And Chewy does a great job. I wonder, do we get box fatigue? Because the food yeah. I have to order, the box, I'm like, what am I going to do with this box? Right now, my four-year-old, that's basically his Christmas gift, so, is playing in the box. Well, here's but what at I some say. point, i got to get rid of you it. You talk about the average spend that yeah. Leslie just said. I, I have to use prescription dog food because one of my dogs has a, a bowel issue. That dog food is $80, <laughs> $80, <laughs> $80, Your $80 a bag, $80 a bag for a 27-and-a-half-pound bag of dog food. That's how much money you can I get spend a new on dog, dog for food. less than that, Dom. <laughs> but I love my dogs. I've bonded with them. They're I part of our how family. old is the dog? I got one six-year-old Havanese and one three-year-old Tibetan. Tibetan. How old is the Poupanese? The Poupanese is six years old. <laughs> you got a long way to go. There we go. Mm -hmm. you know. Volkswagen says it is dropping the Golf Sport Wagon and the all-track vehicles from its lineup after 2019. It's part of a pivot more to these SUVs and crossovers, which now account for nearly 50% of total American sales. Meantime, Buick, the only American automaker left with a wagon in its lineup, and it does not even call it a wagon. Although, Dom Chu, I mean, you're younger than I am, but you and you're also a car guy, so I love the fact we're going to talk about this with you. I don't want this to make a good-looking wagon. Do you think it's a wagon issue, or do you think it's a Volkswagen issue? I think it may be a Volkswagen issue, I agree because with in, you. My, in my town, there are still a ton of Audi, which is a Volkswagen product, yeah. Audi All Roads, you know, those viewers out there know what I'm talking about, yeah. the station wagon looking things. I also still see BMW 3 Series station yeah, wagons really? out there, out there. I, I do. I have not. What I don't I see, not what I don't see are like York. Woody's. Right, but, right. but it's, you but see it's is an Uber. That's you know what, what, I would, what I would say is you, you haven't seen this kind of station wagon prevalent in America in a long time. I remember the last one that really struck the tuning fork in my soul was the Cadillac CTS-V wagon. Sure. You remember that one? Yes. That was like four or five years ago. That was the last time I really found a station wagon that was, wow. How I about a 1991 Mercury Country Squire where I could lay out in the back seat, no seat belt. I never touched either side the of the car. Parents were smoking in the front. It's fantastic. Or the kind where you could face the back. Yeah. No, but I used to love that yeah. kind where you'd sit in the back and then like get to watch all the traffic. Put Dom's dog you. on the roof so you don't have an issue on the yeah. cross-country trip. Yeah, I don't know. Right times, have, times have changed. It's time to evolve. Or how about Get this? Into your have you ever gone no, to no, I'll tell you what. You want to have a winning car? I'll say it right now. RS6 wagon. They have. They sell it in Europe. They don't sell it here. It's fast. But it also Audi. Bring it here. That's a crossover, though. It doesn't look like a station wagon. No, but as it's much. still. But it's an awesome car. All right. Finally, has re. This is gross. Research has found that grasshoppers, silkworms, and crickets, bugs all pack up to five times more antioxidants than a glass of fresh-squeezed orange juice. Researchers say they're an excellent source of protein, fiber, and vitamins as well. A separate study found that 82% of Americans would consider trying edible insects. Guys, could cricket smoothies, Dom? Be the next thing to head to our nearest. I've juice. eaten have insects. Had it? I've eaten insects, and 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 yes, what have you eaten? I, I've had worms. I've had crickets. Fried I've had worms. grasshoppers. Not fried ones. Well, yes, they were fried actually. Was they this were, in a foreign They country? were actually in Houston. They were actually in Houston, oh, Houston at a great restaurant down there. And and I would say this: bugs, not a big deal because we've talked about eating bugs before. But I got to say, why wouldn't you just find another fruit or vegetable or combination that gives you the antioxidants that you need? Well, because well, five it's times as much. Five times. Get a pill. Antioxidants are important, especially these days where we're focused Blueberries a lot are on anti-aging and wellness. What do you I think will, of the story? What I will say so is, firm. unlike here in the U.S., where insects are not part of our diet, in many countries like Thailand and even countries in Africa, they do eat insects. It's part of their diet. It's seen as a good source of protein. In fact, 20 grams of protein when it comes to grass. Here we go. Because so, I'll probably never host this Leslie's show again. Leslie's eating grubs. <laughs> Quickly, strangest thing you've ever eaten. Oh, gosh. Oh, What's gosh? Strangest thing you've ever eaten, I'm dog. trying to I'd think. Say ostrich. Ost ostrich. I've eaten. Oh, I've eaten kangaroo. Kangaroo, ostrich. I've had kangaroo as well. Seema, what mm -hmm. strangest thing you've I ever would eaten? I probably say it's kangaroo. 
Kangaroo and an ostrich. I've had snake yeah. before too. I've had so we could go back to Australia starfish. and not yep. have our likes on our Instagram. And just see But we have the kangaroo. antioxidants. It's going to be delicious. All right. Seema, Modi, Dom, thank you all very much. Leslie Picker, I appreciate you win.